here for Memorial Day weekend and we came here because they're opening for phase two, which is faster than Seattle's moving right now. Well, it makes a lot of sense since we're five hours away from the nearest big city, mm -hmm. the size of, uh, you know, in the millions, which is only Seattle in our state. And this is the biggest city on the east side of the state. So we're next to Idaho. Exactly, and neither of us have ever spent time in our adulthood here in Spokane, so it's like coming to a new new town. And we're actually pretty excited to check it out and do a road trip fairly close to home, but but still very different from what we've seen before. And we cracked the code because we realized that our V resorts are open, unlike actual hotels and so on. Mm -hmm. And here we are, and our room is actually there. So RV resorts tend to also have camping, uh, so there's camping sites and also cabins. And so we don't have an RV, so we're here to stay in the cabin and we just got our key so let's go check it out might not the key again no it's open is it yes there you go ah, <laughs> that's cool I like that. we got a bunk bed we got bunk beds we got a big bed yeah, so this is our little rustic cabin for the next three nights. We extended it. So yeah, we're here for three nights. Um, it's, you know, pretty basic, but this is all we need. And, you know, no linens included, but it's fine. We just brought our uh, sleeping bags. It'll be kind of like camping, but just without the hassle of setting up a tent and having a roof over our heads. And there's a comfortable bed if you're a fussy sleeper like me. <laughs> and there's a heater if we need it. So it is definitely one up from That's a tent. AC, isn't it? And then heat, I think, goes down. Yeah, here. we got both. Yeah, we got a fan even. So yeah, this is really cute, really cool. The attendants when we checked in were just like reiterating, reiterating that everything had been newly cleaned, everything smells really clean, so they're doing a really good job of maintaining the sanitation. So we don't really feel nervous, or at least I don't, about staying here. I don't feel nervous at all because I've been checking the stats and in this whole part of the state there are just a few cases a day at best and in all of Idaho there's like two a day at this point so there's nothing really to worry about when you do the math. Think about the stats mm -hmm. and the chance is basically zero. And for us, you know, we've been, you know, sheltering at home for several months now. So we're not worried that either of us has it. We haven't come into contact with people in a, sadly a very long time. So I think that we're fine ourselves. Right, and this is in fact the first day these cabins open right here. So we have them first and that way there's nothing in them that can be a danger. So we packed a little lighter this time around, just an overnight bag and obviously camera gear. Camera gear's in here and we'll explain the camera gear later on in a separate video. But yeah, here's the sleeping bags that we brought. I'm so incredibly excited to be on another trip, even if it's just to Spokane. This is the fourth trip we're in actually. <laughs> We've been making trips anyway, but this is the part that we've gotten. Now we're gonna go to downtown Spokane and figure out what this So we've reached the part of quarantine where we both are just like, we've eaten so many frozen pizzas and ice cream that it's like, we're so good, but you start to feel kind of gross after a while. So we've been doing like a loose keto diet and we've actually been feeling great. And it hasn't really been that hard to maintain it because you can't eat out. You have to make most of your own food anyway. And that's the hardest thing about being on a keto slash paleo or whatever you want to call it diet. Uh, so yeah, we've been doing that for the last week, but it's also our birthday weekend. So we're probably going to have to indulge a little bit. So we're going to have to go see uh, what's open and what's available. The diet is over. For the weekend! For the weekend! Oh, and we also had the Ulanzi cage back and I'm so excited. The Ulanzi cage and the Gorilla Pod 3K. And this just feels and looks like the best vlogging rig. So we'll see. So for our grand first meal post quarantine, we're going to Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Arby's, I can stomach. Mostly, <laughs> I avoid um, fast food and all these mm -hmm. suburbia type of things, but... In this case, he's the pickier one, because I don't mind. I'll do fast, I'll do any kind of fast food, but yeah, we, we don't eat a whole lot of it, so... So when we do, you know, we have to go all out. You know, you gotta hand it though to the these fast food chains, because they were set up with drive through slash takeout, so... Honestly, they're doing fine among all the restaurants, you know, among restaurants that had to scramble and be like, oh shoot, how do we, you know, count or make this into takeout or delivery? And then these guys have been set for it all along, so. They're the real visionaries. Oh, you know, hi, can I take your order, please? Hi, one of the signature brisket with the curly fries. Mm -hmm. Also, one of the, you see a double. Mm -hmm. 
so the double roast beef also and that too with curly fries yeah. and that'll be good for you today yes your total is going to be 17 17 that first in the fleet okay when's the last time you've been in a drive-thru drive-thru fast food I don't remember. We did Starbucks drive-through because of the Rona. Okay, besides besides <laughs> Starbucks, like an actual like food fast food. I don't remember. Maybe I've done it once, but I've never done it with you. I know that. Yes, it's normally against my policy. I only do it like when I'm going to the gorge, or uh, yeah, when I'm going like to Ellensburg because there's really nothing else to eat in Ellensburg. So I do it like once, maybe twice a year. I used to work at McDonald's. I ate a lot of Big Macs when I worked at McDonald's. Right, yeah. Curly fries, curly oh, fries. You should have sold because we may have the Rona. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know where we come from. Oh, they know. We could be from here. They don't even understand me when I speak. That's true. <laughs> we didn't know their sauces. That's probably what gave it away. They were like, You want a sauce? We're like, What kind of sauce do you have? <laughs> I've forgotten. Ever since I used to clip coupons and be on the um, unemployment, mm. <laughs> I haven't been to Arby's. So in college, I worked at McDonald's and they actually had me doing this, doing the drive through I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. You just get some really weird characters come through and you get your regulars, like you start to know them. You're like, I know exactly what you want. Like you know their voices. And it was actually really fun. First summer, I would not do that full time, but gosh, for a summer job, it was really fun. I would have killed myself. I can't imagine you in service. Like, I can't imagine you doing anything in service. It actually makes sense that you sold shoes at Nordstrom because I'm like, that to me sounds like your kind of job. I mean, it's the top of service in a way. Yeah. Um, I tried it mostly because I wanted to speak to people instead of doing computers yeah. for a bit. But yeah, service I don't feel is for me. I think it's a good experience. I really feel like everyone should do it at some point in their life because yeah, it just puts things into perspective and it also makes you be like, yeah, I don't want to do this forever. So it, it lights a fire under your ass and it's like, all right, what do I have to do to make sure I don't do this for the rest of my life? <laughs> That's definitely how I felt when yeah. I did Nordstrom. Yep. But I, it was my running joke to myself anyway that if my business failed that I would go back and work at McDonald's oh, again. Yeah, no. Hey, but hey, that makes you work harder so your business doesn't fail, right? But you gotta have a backup plan. I think if yes. anything, this virus has taught people that you need a backup plan of like, what if everything goes to hell and you can't do anything? Like you've gotta have, you can't just sit around and think of it then. Like there's gotta be something of like, all right, I know I can probably go do this. It's okay, we're all gonna be YouTubers. That's right. <laughs> Either that or I'd be an Amazon delivery person. That at least, you know, you kind of set your own schedule. You can, you're not sitting at a desk. Go do your yeah. own thing. And they're hiring. I mean, come on. Way. Here you are. Thank, Thank you. you. Sweet. We got the bag. All right. Let's go to a park. Yes. All right. We got the bag and we're in Spokane Riverside Park. And that's a nice place. So we can emerge from the lockdown. Here's the Spokane River and we're in the Riverside Park. It's big actually. It turns out it's downtown that's not essential. <laughs> the... Wait, I hear this. Oh. The gold. Good call. Yes, we are still doing this part of the protocol, which is... Oops, gotta get you some. Sanitizing. You gotta do it. Even though there's three cases here a day, you don't want it to be you. Anyway, washing your hands is good no matter if there's a plague or exactly. not. Exactly. Like if people are cleaner and have better sanitation overall after this, then that's that's still a win. But yeah, here's the gold, the literal gold, and the, what we're most excited about to the point of. Oh god. Yeah, they still make them good. I love fries so much. These are like the best. They're so good. Okay, fries. Can only give us one fries? Lame. Serious? Did they charge for it? Oh. Yes, they did. Fail, Arby's, fail. That's they ripped it. us off. Well, maybe. I'm wondering now if they even charged. Did yeah, we didn't get did. a receipt. They did. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, they didn't. Oh. The only one. So they didn't understand you? Yes, they did. Don't <laughs> get me. The farther you go from the coast, the less they understand accents. Ah, well, that's to be expected, I guess. Yeah. Okay, Dang it. 
<laughs> All right, well, that's okay. We can splurge again later on something else. Yes. That's what that means. <laughs> but wait, first bite. Yes. You need the sauce. Mm. It's made for sauce. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's even better with the bun. I would have bread in like a week. It's really good. It's like mostly mounts and uh, microphones in this part of the bag. <laughs> Whatever you needed, that's what you got. Exactly. That's what this. The, what's so in my bag this videos bag, about? yeah, this bag I use it a lot for DSLRs and like full frame cameras. But when I'm using like Fuji mirrorless, like I don't need all this space. So it's kind of like, what do I do with the extra compartment? So that's where all the GoPro mounts went, and our giant Rode microphone as well. But yeah, the Fuji cameras are so small that this bag is honestly a little too big for them. But you can just pack in more stuff that you hopefully will actually need. Or you can get a smaller bag like me. I have that bag too, but you know. And so she got two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got two. Only two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's see. This is the Rode Video Mic Pro. There's so many of these. And we have a little, um, or a big, muff on it. That's the one I call the Schlong Macro. <laughs> yes, you can call it that too, I guess. And we're gonna put that on the X-T3 and go find these waterfalls, which you can hear them. They should be right around the corner there. So we're gonna go check them out and shoot some photos with them. Sounds like the waterfall is directly under us, so we're about to find out what's the deal. Ooh, yeah, it is actually. Ooh. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of water. Yeah. It's coming right through town. It's big. Wow, this water is moving very fast. Serious rapids. It's this big anywhere. Yeah. And it's right in the middle of the city, yeah. And it's very fast flowing, very. It's very wide as well. My wide angle can't even span the whole thing. It's so cool. Like in this case, I'm, I'm kind of like doing like what you normally do of like you get so absorbed by water. Just the movement of water, you just want to keep shooting like different, different frame rates, different angles. It's, it's mesmerizing. So we just showed you the river, it turns out it's basically just half of it because right here there's another massive half of it. Point. You know that has to mean that there's something good to go there. So yeah, let's go. Oh, people coming. We'll wait. We gotta wait because of the Rona. The what? The Rona. Is that the new name? <laughs> it's been a name. <laughs> Danger. Water levels change rapidly. I'm sure they do. <laughs> Scary. Oh, the inspiration point gets you to the middle of the river.
approaching a footbridge to go across the falls, uh, much lower I think than that other one that we were on. So that should be pretty exciting. Yeah, let's see, we'll get the cool view here. The wide angle is going to be nice. Yes. Susie looks like a tourist, but it's all camera gear. I look like a tourist? <laughs> yes, with a backpack. Oh, well, I'm not trying to. Here's a map of the Riverfront Park and it's large, you see how it spans. So we are just standing right here on this piece of land and that's where the river has split in two already and then it splits in two more. So this is actually crazy. We've been noticing there are a lot of beautiful buildings in Spokane, like this brick building here, it's a classic and now they've converted that partially into a restaurant right there and it's right next to the waterfall. So this is the old flour mill, there's a sign outside that says that yeah it's been here for a long time Luckily they've restored it and people still come here but for different reasons. The classic nice restaurant is closed today but we'll find something else for tonight. We found the bridge that's actually open so let's see this. very impressed with the park in Spokane. It's massive and it's so close to this really rushing river but there's also a calmer side of the river here so you can get kind of the best of both worlds and still have a city nearby. Yeah so we can take a look how here it comes down completely. We happen to be under a bridge but and mind you we are downtown. So yeah, we're exploring more of the heartland of the USA, five hours inland, which is still in the little corner of the country because of how huge it is. And there's so much to explore in this country. You don't even have to leave it for decades or ever if you wanted to. It looks like we're finally about to discover how wide the river actually is because it all converges here. Until now it's like, oh, what a huge river. Wait, that's a quarter of it. No, wait, wait it's a half of it. No, wait, it's a quarter of it. And it really is big. So it splits in two here. But you can see here, GoPro from so far can barely span it with the wide angle. And this explains why the river is so fast on this side, because there's a dam really. They're constricting it. So right after here it speeds up a lot. And from here the rapids are brutal. There's a little, what is this thing called, a cabin car. Cool. So you can go in a little cabin car uh, across the way and see the falls and floats, which is pretty cool. This is the shot right here with the wide angle.
we're now overlooking all of Spokane and it's down the valley that way you, you can see what the geography is like here the weather got a lot colder up here and the air feels really crisp though it's like nice mountain air and there's a lot more trees so it's another really great outdoor escape that's not too far from town yeah and it is like on a plateau so the entire time you have a vista like a panoramic view this is great right here is the city view which on a wide angle looks far but it's actually pretty close and there's like nobody up here that's true we're just alone that never happens in seattle and it's a great temperature. It's not too hot, but it's not too cold. It's comfortable. So we drove around looking for yet another view of the city. And we got to this neighborhood that reminds us a lot of Portland and even parts of Seattle like Queen Anne. It's like up in the hills. Yeah, this definitely has all the views and is the wealthier part of town. We found the botanical garden. It seems like things like the Japanese garden and some of the other ones are closed, but the botanical garden is open. Ooh, bird. And we're discovering or laughing at a lot of the names of some of these plants. This one is called Tasque Flower Pulsatila vulgaris. But yeah, this is gorgeous. There are so many flowers and plants and like no people here. It's very easy to social distance. But there's this one in particular that when you crush it, it's called it a lemon like balm. Lemon. lemon balm, yeah. Mm. It smells so good. Dwarf lady's mantle. <laughs> Interesting. Somewhere here is a trail right here, so you can go through all the flowers. This one's called a creeping phlox. It sounds like a disease. <laughs> creeping phlox. So here life is coming back to normal in Spokane actually. The hotels are open, the bars are open, the restaurants are open, people are out. Everyone's just had it, we're ready to just get back to normal. Yeah, and we just enjoyed that. It took five hours to get away from the city. Well actually there still is a concern, but here, if you look at the data, there isn't. So it's a really the right decision to open now. So we just had our birthday dinner. We had it at a pizza spot here in the University District of Spokane and they opened two days ago. So we got super lucky to be able to sit down and have a normal uh, dinner. Yeah, it was amazing right on our birthdays. And I had a beer and pizza and there were people. How amazing is that? Things are coming back to normal and the summer is about to begin. Things are looking mm -hmm. up. There were just a few differences, like the employees were wearing a mask and the tables were spaced apart and you had to access your menu via a QR code scan on your phone but other than that it felt like normal. And the bathroom was all automated so you don't have to touch anything, it's great. It's so yeah, things are coming back to normal and hope is back. <laughs> <laughs> There's hope. Good morning, this is day two of our road trip and we've escaped the lockdown and we have now driven across the state line just 25 minutes from Spokane and we entered Coeur d'Alene. This is a little resort town and so far we're really impressed just by driving through it. It looks a lot more built up compared to Walla Walla and Lake Chelan and some of the other places in Washington that we tend to go to a lot. And the big nice thing about right now is that right over the state line it's still restrictions and whatnot but here everything looks completely open the first order of business is coffee and there's one right here and we're gonna try to just walk into a coffee shop like normal life vault coffee in downtown Coeur d'Alene May 16 they've already opened and there we go life goes on since their birthday is a day apart and normally falls on a holiday it's a very long celebration <laughs> and we can justify spending money and treating ourselves for a while. Wow. First caffeine hit of the day is delicious. These are so good. I was reading some of the reviews that they had posted and people were saying that they drive all the way from Seattle to get coffee here. And I'm like, I wouldn't go that far, but it's really, really good. Well, I just drove all the way from Seattle to get a haircut. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if any salon is open on a Sunday though. Oh. So this here is right next to Lake Coeur d'Alene and this is the main attraction in this town. We're very huge with water sports. Yeah, Coeur d'Alene is quite an established tourist place and 
We come here every several years, I guess. <laughs> but we should come more, I we think. We should come more often, yeah. yeah. Especially now that we know about Spokane. Spokane as well, like, I like Spokane. Yeah, and tomorrow we're exploring a national park near Spokane, so mm -hmm. it should be all good. Here's the little waterfall. And the promenade near the... I think this is the original first hotel they built here. It just feels amazing to get out of the quarantine and go into a coffee shop and then come out here and stroll with your coffee. Yeah, it's a great combination of just feeling normal with service again and being able to support small businesses because I do miss that part of it actually. And the interaction with people and yeah, just having this nature nearby, this already has been well worth our trip. I normally am pretty skeptical about spending money and now I'm like, yeah, here's a big tip, here's more business. That's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm hoping that's the case all around, especially in service because yeah, these people are going back to work and they have all the restrictions on them, honestly. It's, uh, that's right. It's not really on customers necessarily, but that's up to the business. Sometimes they're gonna ask you to wear a mask, but that hasn't happened in Spokane or Coeur d'Alene so far. Here the flags are flying of the USA and of Idaho and I think of Coeur d'Alene itself but they're flying half mast because it's Memorial Day weekend and by the way as soon as you get out of Seattle area and into Spokane, Idaho they care a lot more about these holidays and any occasion to be patriotic truly we came here on the 4th of July and there was a huge parade and the mayor came down on a Harley Davidson. And we stayed with this sweet old lady. I wonder if she's still there. But we Airbnb'd with her and she was like this amazing lady who was like, she was running marathons and she was probably in her 60s, 70s. No, 80s. 80s? Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. But yeah, she was impressive and she had this hot tub like in her garage and like a map and she said she would like be in her hot tub and look at the map and be like, where should I go next in the world? Like, yeah, and she also hit the trophy that she hit a hole in one in the golf course here. And we asked her what she's doing next and she said she's going island hopping in the Caribbean on sailboats. Yeah, she was an inspiration. I mean. We just enjoyed our coffee on the sunny beach and now we're looking for a diner to have breakfast like normal people. Bagels, waffles, paninis. I'm kind of sold, I don't know about you. Yeah, I'm done. And it's open, yeah, go for it. Hi, can I do the avocado chocolate bagel? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like it. Look okay, at this amazing looking bagel. This is like the best looking tomato bagel I think I've ever seen. Yeah, they bake their own bagels, they even have the little baking corner over there. So what did you get now? You got Smoked salmon. salmon. Yours looks super nice though. Well, we enjoyed our breakfast and it was amazing. It tasted really great. That was some of the best bagels I think I've ever had that made in-house. And it was so full that we couldn't even finish the whole thing. But we took a walk further down and we came to this little beach area. We see some seaplanes out there, in fact. All right, let's, let's do the water test. Yes, cold test. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. It's still pretty chilly out right now. <laughs> but I bet summers here would feel amazing. It the lake is crystal clear as usual in the northwest. Oh yeah, it's chilly. Yep, it's cold. That would... Uh, it's cold. <laughs> that would be tough for right now. <laughs> yeah, I like it here. This is one of the best, most built-up resort towns that I've seen in Washington. It's not Washington, I know, so outside of Washington. In but very coast. close, because when you cross that border into Idaho, you barely even know that you're going into another state. So it feels like it's still part of Washington. Well, in fact, Spokane is the big city and the metro of Spokane stretches into Idaho here in Coeur d'Alene. So when they count the statistical area, they count this whole place and it reaches 800,000 people. It's actually not a small town at all. Mm -hmm. It could easily be called a medium city. And it has everything you would need. It has an airport too, so you're not stuck. You're not in the middle of nowhere. It's actually a metropolis. This feels so great. And even though it's not crowded, I like that it's not too crowded, but um, it's starting to wake up. You see people kind of walking towards town. So it's just people, people. I haven't been this close to people in a long time. It feels good. It's looking like a crew. Six kayaks, seven kayaks, awesome. Doesn't kayaking sound amazing right now? Doesn't it? Doesn't it sound really nice to own a kayak? Yeah, we're gonna buy them. In the Northwest. 
We're gonna buy them. We just have been holding off because of the logistics, but I think I have the solution. And the van life slash RV life crew. Sort of. But we have a twist, exactly. We have a sort twist. Of. But we're not gonna tell you right now. So you're gonna have to keep following our channel to figure out what we mean. <laughs> so this is the cool thing about Coeur d'Alene. You have a hotel right on the lake. You have downtown right on the lake. And then beaches right in downtown all around here. And it's really well done with the infrastructure for the tourism. In fact, here you have a water plane takeoff. Yeah, so you've got scenic uh, flights by seaplane. I'm not sure if they come from other places because we have seaplanes in Washington, seaplanes in Vancouver. So sometimes you can get to other places. I don't know if they fly here specifically. There's also daily cruises, there's parasailing, there's kayaking, you can bring your own boat. Like there's so much you can do on this lake. It's pretty impressive. One thing people may not know is that Idaho has among the best preserved wilderness where the only access is by seaplane and it's not far from here. Mm -hmm. So if you want it untouched, totally untouched by humans, wilderness, it's near here. The double kayak is 25 for two hours. Oh, well I was looking at the cruise prices here oh. too and they're not too bad either. Oh man. <laughs> so these little booths are servicing. Yeah. And they're not bad. No. Like we were just talking about this over breakfast, how Seattle feels way more expensive than a resort town, which is kind of messed up. But I mean, I guess it makes sense. Cities are becoming that way where they're as expensive, if not more so, than going to a resort town. More. Daily scenic public cruises. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one is famous. There's a part of the golf course in Coeur d'Alene, which is one of the holes is here in the middle of the lake. So yeah, they're saying this is the only way to see the world famous floating green, which must be that one. Yeah, very cool mural here in Coeur d'Alene downtown, depicting classic scenes from Idaho, including Susie sleeping over there <laughs> until noon like she likes to do. There are wild horses in Idaho, you can go and find them. And they are indeed very muscular like that, they're not like a horse that just sits around all day. Oh, wild horses. Yeah, wild anything is a lot leaner and scarier. Honestly. Free range like horses. Than, yeah. <laughs> Even chicken. I remember having free range chicken in Belize and you bite into it like, this thing is tough. It's That's like, yeah, right. this thing was running around its entire life. That's <laughs> right. So there we go. There's a salmon going up the... In the waterfall. <laughs> and a heron or a crane. What tree is that though? I really want to know. This tree that's flat at the bottom. It must be from Idaho, so I want to find that tree. Oh my god, it might be happening. It says book by appointment. Uh, we'll we'll see if they'll make the exception here. It'll go be noisy. Um, okay, we've been looking for a hair salon that's open on a Sunday on a holiday weekend and we see people doing it, so let's see. How's it going, man? Good. Are you guys taking walk-ins? Not at the moment, no. Whoa, well, no. I got one at the three. Yeah. Three o'clock. Can I book it and come back? Sure. No, you have to stay here until <laughs> That's a What's bit. What's your name? Martin. Martin? Yeah. Cool. I'll put you up. You're good. Just come back at 3. 3 p.m. back. Okay, thank yep. you. It might be happening at 3 p.m. today. <laughs> the demand is high. Yes. <laughs> Fairy Gut Park. <laughs> Some kind of name that we're struggling to really remember. And at the end of it, you actually come to a Navy reserve on the side of the lake here and but there's also some private development including this really great RV park. And it's empty right now, but just look at the sights that you could get and you're right next to the water. This is great if you're traveling with a boat. Or if you want to do some kayaking or boating, you can have your RV like right here and just go out to the water. And so that's part of what influenced this trip was, at least for me, was watching a lot of RVers and realizing that a lot of people live in their RVs full time. So RV parks have had to, or they've been heavily incentivized to open up to cater to, cater to those people. And a lot of RV parks also have campsites and cabins. And so we've been taking advantage of that the past couple of weekends to go to RV parks and to stay overnight and just take advantage of it because they've been reopening a lot faster than our state campgrounds which are saying that they're not going to open until the end of July which is kind of crazy because it's still May right now. This is Bayview, Idaho and apparently it's famous for floating homes and there are marinas here right on the lake and even floating restaurants so let's check it out. This however is far into the land. Oh, it's closed. <laughs> so you have to have passes to access a lot of these docks because they're actually used for a bunch of things. 
kid would just not eat them, this could have been a good place to stop. Yeah, here we see patterns only, but the dogs keep going into the lake and there are floating properties on it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. And a floating restaurant to serve them. It's another thing that's worth mentioning, and I don't know if it's uh, exclusive to the Northwest, but you have so many different lifestyles that you can have. You can live on a boat, you can live in an RV, you can live in a condo, you can live in a house, you can live in your car. I mean, you can do basically whatever you want. And in Seattle, you can live on the sidewalk. <laughs> Well, yeah, here's now a dock which is open to show you what this is like. It's got all the boating infrastructure that you would need. Floating plane over there. So seaplanes land here, obviously. interesting is that there's a yellow white sand beach next to mountains with snow on them. It is uh, called City Beach, I think. Yeah. I didn't think it was actually going to be a beach, but it really is. Like, the sand looks legit. Yeah. Here we go. We're officially on the beach. What a nice beach it is, too. There's an Amtrak station, like, right around the corner, and even a Best Western Hotel. There are RVs parked here, there are sailboats, so you can do a lot here. Yeah, this is in fact a well-built resort because there's a ski resort up the mountains, I think, in this side. And the truth is there are mountains on every side, so it's winter and summer tourism here. Do the water test. <laughs> That's still pretty cold. Yeah, that would not be very fun. It'd be fun for a quick dip, that's about it. On the beach in Idaho. Who would have thought? It is a landlocked state, but... ship and the Statue of Liberty and snow laced mountains in the back in Idaho. over here and over there people biking and the big beaches here and snow mountains in the back it's just so great here in Sandpoint Idaho totally was the winning move to come here away from the big city So we drove from Seattle yesterday. Nice. And we stayed in Spokane. So today we went up to Sandpoint in the mountains. Um, I'm a local boy. Yeah, you grew up here. Mm -hmm. One of my good friends grew up here. Moved to Seattle later. Really? Yeah. 
I've cool. tried to move a couple times, I just can't do it. Well, it's a good I always come back. This should be more of that, honestly. Right. People are moving too much right now. Well, not exactly right now. <laughs> no, but I know. In general, yeah. I mean, it's just. It's a shame my wife knows already I'm doing this last time I didn't tell her. <laughs> yeah. This time it was her idea actually. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Well at least you know you're not getting in trouble now. Yeah. You know? That's true. Yeah, last time it was very funny because uh, I did it and then I wore a hat for a while. And then we took a flight to Arizona and I, I showed it to her way after like two days later. Oh, no way. It was very funny. Yeah. What she said the first time. She loved it. She's a photographer, so I wanted to have it when we go to Arizona and there's all this cactus and stuff around. <laughs> so I made a great photo shoot. Nice. And it will keep, you know. Because you'll get the Mohawk, a lot of well, but a really cool really thing cool. with it, you know what I mean? Exactly, that's cool. Uh, it's like the city here is coming back to life now. Oh yeah. It's good too, because we've been missing it, you know? Yeah, so it was pretty slow for a while. Yeah, I mean, we had to shut down the shop on March 25th, but, you know, we didn't really have too much wrong by the shit. Right, it kind of just starts to burn up. Yeah. feels so good. <laughs> Here, nice seat by the fireplace, huh? Finally. Finally a haircut. I'm very, very happy, especially with my neck. <laughs> I got my hair cut finally after months and months so I normally wait a while and then the lockdown happens so it's been like six months or something mm -hmm. unbearable neck here <laughs> and, <laughs> and finally I found a barber in Idaho to cut my hair and he did it well I think he did fades plus a mohawk it's nice so our joke is that we came to Idaho just so we could get his hair cut and we could eat in a restaurant and have our coffee and go back to normal Five hours one way to get this luxurious experience. That's right. It's definitely awesome. Here we have downtown Coeur d'Alene on a holiday weekend. It looks amazing. It feels like, I don't know, like classic Americana. <laughs> yes. The vibes though, like the modernized version of it. And, uh, Which, utopic version. Turns out to be pretty awesome. 
yeah this is good this is like a good moment in time and you have also the fact that it's reopened the, the world is back the good old world is back now then you start thinking about what makes the world normal so that it's like the sights but it's also the smells like you can smell the hamburgers and like <laughs> the trees and all kinds of stuff like the sounds of you know people dogs nature all that together and how that creates your perspective yeah we should record a little bit of ambient of people back out again apparently this is the world's longest floating boardwalk the things you find when you're walking through Idaho Right? I had no idea this was here. Nice breeze, it is a little chilly, but yeah, this looks really cool. I think we will get an awesome view by climbing up these towers. Here's the little tower, which also serves as the gate to the marina. Where we came on. Here's the marina, everyone is sheltering their boat here. Well, it continues a long way, a long way. The rest of the boardwalk here is cool, isn't it? It's very cool. picnic area here <laughs> not that bad huh it's way better than our pier <laughs> well isn't it nice that things are open again in the USA if you look in the right place yeah, so here's what it looks like on our table I got the beer we have Wurst and Schnitzel. It's a lot of potatoes. We had to get Idaho potatoes over here. And many sauces here, the whole stack. We are having beer and sausage and Schnitzel and it just feels amazing after three months of deprivation. And mind you, we were such foodies. Susie works in the industry. We ate out like 20 times a week or something. It's been really tough not having it, so it's so nice being back and not cooking. I had to cook for the most of my entire life. <laughs> and now it's back on if you go to the right place. Hopefully it stays this way. It's a great benefit to be here, you know. electric dam mm -hmm. so it turns out this whole river has a system of dams that provide all the power here so it's green 
Yeah. And all the jams are now both paradise. Yeah, and also we're using that Lytra Pro to illuminate ourselves right now. So this is out in the field around blue hour, uh, about right after 8.30, so 8.45ish. Yeah, let's see how vlogging like this goes. If we can vlog like this at nightish, that's quite nice mm -hmm. actually. I do think that, yeah, this is the best light because of its size. It's a little bit bigger, so it should hopefully, hopefully illuminate both of us yeah. instead of two of us. Yeah, instead of making one spot really shiny. Right. Yeah. And it's tolerable to look at. That's true, it's not <laughs> terrible. We have that uh, diffuser on top of it, so it's not blinding us. Yeah, it's probably nice. Mm -hmm. Hope yeah. so, if you're a mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> it's shining in the moonlight. Ah, what a nice day. Well, it was a great day. We're gonna sleep in our camp and tomorrow we have another yep. action-packed day planned, so... Day three. Yes, day three. <laughs> Well, rainy day, but we are in a national forest we've never seen before called Colville and it's gorgeous. That's right, so we had hiking plans today, but unfortunately the weather is not cooperating. It's not pouring, but it's, it's wet enough where it would be uncomfortable, especially with our camera gear. So we're just having to improvise and instead we're just going to drive through and kind of wait and see and hope that the rain uh, stops at some point. Ooh, yeah, we were at Little America. That's right, we just found Little America here in the woods. And there's a cabin here, it's like a historic marker mm -hmm. and a creek running down. So we're we all to ourselves, nobody else is here. It's Memorial Day today, so a lot of people have packed up and left. Uh, which is kind of nice for us because that means that no one else is around. That's right, and it's nice to be in a national park by yourself, really. It is. I mean, all to ourselves. Why not? I'm not phased. We'll keep exploring. we we'll keep trying to have a good time. This appears to be a forest camp, and we're at the edge of a lake. I see. So here we see the creek, but the lake begins that way. Sherman Lake Forest Camp. Plant for right. <laughs> it's a bathhouse. <laughs> this is a bathhouse. I guess so. Camp closed, plan to develop, beginning of World War, shifted from recreation to timbers for the war effort. Structures remains for national heritage. So yes, we have a bathhouse from the logging days of this area. Really needed shelter. We could do something in here. We've got water right next to you. Plenty of cameras. <laughs> That's true, actually. But yes, the presentation is nice. Yeah, right. It and looks like a big shell here. And then this is on a bed of goodies. Nice. So this is officially, I think, our first fine dining experience. Of sorts. <laughs> I 
hiding from the rain and driving through the rain and figuring out what to do and the day panned out okay actually. It was a really wet day and we had, you know, hikes in mind and scenic driving and we weren't able to do the hikes but that's okay. We did the scenic driving and that was enough to give us a sense of the region and the fact that we definitely want to come back. So we'll just plan to come back another time and see it when it's not raining. That's right, we explored a lot over three hours north of Spokane where there are highlands and the Columbia River is very green unlike south where it's yellow and brown and it looks like a gorgeous area. There's nature for days and days to enjoy, in fact years and mm -hmm. there's land to settle for centuries. It's it's a great area here. There's water, so much water. So we learned all that and then we came back to Coeur d'Alene and we hunkered down in the main resort and had some drinks with a view. <laughs> yeah, that's one of our hacks of if, if there's a resort nearby and you're not staying at it, you can usually go to their rooftop bar or their like high level bar. They always have some kind of restaurant or bar and if you're willing to you know, pay a little bit for a drink, you can sit down and enjoy the view that way. So that's what we did to hide from the rain and I'm all over our thoughts of what we think about this area. And speaking of the hacks, um, in Seattle when you sit down anywhere you're dropping like 50 bucks. Here for the two of us to get some drinks and snacks it was $35 with the best view in town. It was a great deal. Yes, and I got so oysters like... even. I had fresh oysters. Yeah. They were delicious. Uh, great service. Uh, everything was fine. Yeah, it was and great. now it's actually clearing up. We now see this ahead of us where the sun may make a reappearance. Also, we're hiking again. So we're here on a hiking trail and others are venturing too. Yeah. And we're dressed in quick dry head to toe. So That's right, I have three layers of quick dry here and I have it on my pants as well, my underwear and my socks and my shoes. Everything is quick dry, it's kind of amazing. So I don't care if I get rained on within 20 minutes, I'm fine. You might look like a tourist as you called me earlier, but that's okay. I <laughs> that mean, was... you... <laughs> Because of your big backpack well, and your I mean, camera. Yeah, I mean, I do look like a, I don't know, an outdoor jungle explorer, I guess. But that's fine. I mean, that's actually the vibe of this area. And we got into that hotel, went up to the seventh floor, had our drinks just fine, dressed like this. Which is great. <laughs> that's true. Because truly, if I come here, I spend all day in the woods. I actually want to end the day on a high note. I will still come into a po posh restaurant. That would have been our plan anyway, honestly. Yeah. That, that's yeah. our style anyway. Yeah. We're outdoorsy and we like the fine dining and if they can accommodate that lifestyle this is very nice for us yeah i've got my lone peak ultras which look a little bit bigger on me they do look like i don't know house slippers more so but these don't slip in the wet like those superiors do so truly wearing this gear like marmot and ultra and arcteryx I, I feel like i'm wearing my indoors hanging out clothing for comfort mm -hmm. and yet it's super practical in the elements yeah. too yeah, this is all quick dry, so even though we're wet right now, it's totally fine. It's already kind of drying off. 